Hey Thomas, what's going on here? I keep finding these turbo stickers around the hey? house. Thomas, you, you can't just stick the word turbo on everything. Well, Porsche did it first. You are an idiot. You're watching Throttle House. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And this is the 2020 Porsche Macan Turbo. Macan is an exotic name. And with it, Porsche have chosen to combine ideas of suppleness, power, and dynamics. It's actually from the Indonesian word for tiger. But hilariously, if you look at the same word in Scottish, it means sonny, laddie, or little boy. James. <clears throat> Which we think also works because it suggests a stoutness and a William Wallace level of strength. And today's Macan Turbo gets some fun changes for 2020, including an upgraded engine that gives us 434 horsepower and 405 pound-feet of torque, more aero, and finally, the new Macan design language that adorns its less powerful siblings, which includes that delightful light bar rear end. More importantly, now that we've tested BMW, Mercedes, Audi, and Alpha's finest in this department, we're keen to see how Stuttgart's latest and most competent sports crossover stacks up, and if it can truly serve as an example of, in a one-car solution, being able to have your Porsche cake and eat it too. And if you're new to Throttle House, we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing about. So subscribe and hit the bell. is the 2020 Macan Turbo. And I didn't know it would launch that aggressively. All right, manual. I've heard the launch control is aggressive. 5,000 RPM, oh my. Why? <laughs> Why do you need this at a crossover? And the reason we have that power is even though Porsche say that there is no substitute, there is a substitute for displacement because this now has less displacement. This is now a 2.9 litre V6, rather than the outgoing 3.6 litre V6. And yet we have 34 more horsepower now, and that's some hot V turbo magic and placement of the engine. I've driven this car a lot, but that's the first time I've done launch control, and I can tell you that what they've done is package the majority of the drama into the launch control, because that's the most electrifying part of this car so far. That V6 up front is objectively awesome. It has all of the right torque characteristics and it's attached to a PDK, which is the only thing you can get in a Macan. And that's a good thing because the shifts are stupid. They're so fast. Listen, when I click this paddle, the gap doesn't exist. It simply doesn't exist. PDK still blows my mind to this day. The Macan Turbo is very, very good. However, despite those numbers, this isn't actually as quick off the line as a Stelvio Quadrifoglio or a GLC 63S or an X3M competition. But you have to question whether you need that because every time we drive one of those, we say, it doesn't need this speed. And this still qualifies for that level of speed. When Porsche took what is effectively an Audi and decided to make a little crossover out of it originally and as they updated it, what they did was they kind of engineered all of the Audi out of it, which means that they not only made it look very different on the outside, and James and I will talk about that in a second, but they made it drive very differently as well. And they changed kind of the seating position, how the car feels. I'm driving this in Sport Plus at the moment, so this has this comes standard with adaptive dampers. So in Sport Plus mode, it's the most aggressive, most aggressive throttle response, most aggressive damping. Basically, I'll put it in sports car mode, and it is that. This can be had with air suspension, which is only about a thousand bucks more, fifteen hundred bucks more. And seeing as this is actually configured to a hundred and seventeen thousand dollars, I think I'd add that on too as well because. In the city, this is quite harsh in, in ride. 
and the air suspension is supposed to make it a lot more supple, a lot more compliant. So that for me would be a worthy upgrade. Where Porsche have succeeded, and they tend to always succeed, is the handling. Making a car feel smaller, feel agile. They've even got a smaller steering wheel in this. The diameter is like, it's, it's like a Cayman. Handling, what do we got? Well, Porsche redesigned all of the suspension when they took the Audi parts, and they did a good job. Turns in very well, the steering feels fantastic, it weights up perfectly, and it's just rock-planted solid on the ground. From where I'm sitting, this is very Porsche. Incredible solidity to everything. The way that the car responds to inputs, the damping, everything about it is very stout. The thing is, though, is that it has a little turbo badge on it. And turbo in Porsche world, even if you're talking about the Taycan turbo, means ballistically fast, face-rippingly fast. And this isn't that. If you told me this was the Macan S, I'd believe you. It's not as quick as I thought that it was going to be. It's impressive. It is measurably impressive. But it's not crackling and exciting like the Stelvio Quadrifoglio. It doesn't have the AMG bellow of the GLC 63S. Porsche have made this in such a way that you, if you wanted to, you can trick yourself into thinking you are driving a 911. The steering wheel, the dash with the Sport Chrono, again, you could trick yourself into thinking it's a 911 if it weren't for the fact that it actually feel really high up. And the seats are high, and the position is high, my, I'm, you know, my center of gravity is high, and, and nothing can really change that. And I said to Thomas, and this is my issue with the, the crossover stuff, is I don't really like tomatoes, and as fresh and delicious as this tomato is, I'm not a big fan of it. To which he said, yeah, but you like tomato sauce. And I said, yeah, but tomato sauce, when you put it on a plate, has a lower center of gravity. All right, what do you think? I think it drives like a little Cayenne. It does, yeah, exactly. It doesn't drive like a Cayman or a 911. No. It drives like a slightly better Cayenne. It's yeah. an in-between, it's the crossover. Yep. Uh, but it doesn't, you know, this one's got a turbo badge slapped on it and it doesn't feel that turbo. No, no, yeah, we, right? we, we mentioned that. It doesn't actually feel ballistically fast like I kind of wanted it to. It should to, break right? your neck. Yeah. It also doesn't look much like a turbo. There's not much that separates this in styling to the Macan S. Yeah. Like the 911 Turbo has this big vent here that tells yes. you it's the turbo. I mean, this has some fancy option stuff. So this is the 21 inch spider wheels. Yes. Uh, it comes standard this year with, with 20 inches, but I don't know, maybe the 21 inch sacrifices too much ride. Yeah. And this isn't a square setup either. This is, uh, th these rear tires are bigger than the ones at the front. Oh, we got 295 and a 265. I wonder, yeah. so like that's, they probably did that to build in some understeer because safety. Um, but I wonder if you went to a square setup in this, I feel like that would actually prove the handling. Not that it's bad, it's very good, but yeah. I think that would even more turn in. But it's very sports car though, to do bigger at the back. It is very sports car, yeah. yes. Yeah. So that's what they've gone for, the Macan sports car. Yeah. And yet, it is a very pretty crossover. That is what it is. Well, the Macan's always been pretty, actually. It has, but it came in later. It did. It, <laughs> Porsche hit their stride with crossover styling. A, a generation or two into the Cayenne. If you look yes. at the old Cayenne, yeah, not even a... even the Panamera, the old Panamera, not so not so good. Not, good, not so pretty. Well, what they did, which I thought was cool, is that this is on the MLB platform Volkswagen, which is the same as the SQ5, whatever. Yeah. But what they did was obviously, other than the engine, the transmission, and the suspension tuning, that's all Porsche. They completely redesigned the outside, and this is the best part right here. Check this out. Watch this. Be amazed, James. I'm ready to be amazed. Oh, it opened! But look what happens when it opens. You have a clamshell hood. Oh, this is a full gap. Look at this. Yeah, that's a big hole. I don't know why this is so fun. It's very cool. Um, this is the new 2.9 liter V6, which obviously we can't see because there's a plastic engine cover on it. But what you can see is where the axle is compared to the engine. I thought, honestly, there'd be more engine behind the front axle than there is. It's very out front, which is amazing they made it handle as well as they did with actually a fair amount of weight out front. Should we do the interior? Absolutely. Socially distanced? Socially distanced, at least six feet away. Right. One James away. All right. Yeah. Oh. Oh, there's the tube. Oh, there's the chop. How does it go? Is it the, it's uh, the, the streets were bent. No, I was born in the streets. Yes. Cops were bent in my neighborhood. The cops were bent. 
If you haven't seen our Cayenne review, that might not make much sense. That's from yeah, the Cayenne. This car drops a beat when, it you, does. Uh, when you get in it. From a distance, let's talk about the interior. Okay. It's Porsche quality. It's, it's wonderful in here. It is. Although, it's, everything is so tight and nice, right? Yeah. But the, there's so many buttons, right? Like, yeah, well, we just did a video on this, on how some manufacturers are getting rid of buttons. And Porsche went the other way. Re really far. As many the other buttons way. as possible. Yep. Like, I counted, and even just the climate control alone has tens of buttons. <laughs> tens of buttons. I'm not, yeah, I'm not a good counter. <laughs> uh, this has the Bose audio system. It's great. It, they can upgrade it to Burmester. Oh, think, can you? Yeah, it's oh, five grand. Nice. I think I would because uh, the Bose one's fine. It's just fine. It's just fine. That's usually how Bose yeah. is, yeah. And we have the 10.9 inch screen, which is very nice. I've enjoyed that a lot. And it has Apple CarPlay, wireless Apple CarPlay, actually. Although I feel like, you know, this is out. This is VAG group. I wish it had the haptic feed feedback that the Audi had. Fancy. It's wonderful. It's got the carbon fiber inserts. You can do all the normal Porsche stuff. You can have all of this in red. This right. is the black leather. So that's an upgrade as well. This has got the Sport Chrono package. It's nice leather too. Again, remember this has $30,000 options and a lot of them are experienced on the inside. thousand dollars Yeah, options. like heated leather steering wheel, you've got the climate controlled seats with the air, the vented seats, these are heated seats in the back, the privacy blinds, glass sunroof, like it's it's an occasion in here. Speaking of the seats actually, so like we talked about how they're bolstered when we were driving them up, but like, they're soft. They are Usually soft. Usually German seats are quite firm and like these are really cushy. I actually like them a lot. Yeah, they're very, very nice and these are the 18 way as well. So yeah, lots of adjustability. <laughs> so many buttons on the side to adjust. It's, but it's, it's, you it know, somehow makes more sense when you reach down and do it than it does when I'm looking at it right here. This is yeah, this is buttons. complicated. Yeah, it just looks like a Mario level. The back seats, by the way, speaking of them, I, I like them. They're, they're okay. It's a bit cramped, I find. Really? It, yeah, like it's, my head just about touches the ceiling. It does kind of brush it, but it feels like there's vertical height because the roof is very horizontal. Right? And the, well, the glass roof also helps with that as well. It definitely But does. the front is definitely a cockpit feeling. It's definitely tighter than like the other competitions that we've, we've driven. Yeah, I, I, it is a smaller interior overall, but I think that may have been a bit intentional to give you that kind of Cayman low down slung feeling, even though the but driving But you don't position, feel that low. You don't, the driving position is too it high. It feels high, the yeah. seat doesn't go that low and you feel high off the road, which I guess you want with a crossover. I, I guess that's, I, is that the I goal? Guess? We don't know. We don't know. <laughs> we can't make sense of it. don't understand. In terms of what we said at the beginning, does this allow you to have your cake and eat it? Is it a sports car that happens to be more practical? Yes and no, because a crossover, unfortunately, is exactly that. It's a hybrid car, not in the traditional sense. It's like a hybrid meal. It's like brunch. You, you get to eat it at 11.30. It's delicious, but by that point, you're starving. You've already had an uncomfortable morning. You've already sacrificed having your granola with strawberries, which is delicious. I don't understand why I can't have that every day. You've got a lineup outside the hipster restaurant. It's expensive, and you're already hungry by 3 o'clock again. For me, the conclusion of this is I think that I would not buy the turbo trim if I was buying a Macan. I would buy the S trim, save the money, maybe even the new four cylinder. I'm not saying that the Macan doesn't hit the mark, I just don't think the Macan turbo is where this car shines and it finds itself more at home in the Macan S territory. And yes, I know the 0 to 100 km per hour time becomes 5.3 seconds or whatever it is, but you don't need it save the money, keep all the wonderful Porsche build quality and handling and air suspension and you have a win. Or get a Cayenne, get a bit more space and buy a used Cayman. Then you get the best of both worlds. You get a dynamically excellent crossover, SUV, whatever, that can handle back roads, sharp maneuvers, has just enough punch to get you into that gap. And then when you really want to experience Porsche and what it means, you bring out the Cayman, you take it to the track and you realize how amazing this brand can be.